Hello, Timo here. Welcome back. Hope you're having a great day today. All right, so continue with our application. Today, we're going to be adding the delete uh, button or feature. So if you want to delete a participant, you can delete them from this page or you can delete them from the participant page too as well. So let's add that feature or a button. So let's do that real quick. So we have a button here, we call it a uh, delete. Let's make this small. Then we're going to call uh, on click. So on click, what function do we want to call? Let's say uh, handle uh, delete. Let's call it a handle participant deletion. I guess that sounds nice. And um, we want to pass in the participant itself. So let's bring that here. So we have a function, oops, we don't want that. So we have a function called handle participant deletion, which takes in the participant and which is of that type participant. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to uh, run the, use the confirm. Uh, let's call it, uh, do you want to delete uh, this participant name. You want to delete this person. Uh, shoot uh, is delete. So if is delete is true or not, if the user does not want to delete, then we just return. If they do want to delete, then we want to run a mutation, a delete mutation here. So let's call it a to do delete mutation so what we want to do is we want to get a mutation from use mutation and just as we saw for the um, edit participant uh, you can use the use mutation to handle a lot of stuff so we're just going to repeat the exact same thing for in this case right here so over here what do we want to do we just need uh, the participant, uh, sorry, participant ID. We just want the participant ID, which is just a number in this case. Why only the ID and not the entire object? Uh, because it's not necessary to send the entire object. We are just deleting the uh, participants from the database. So what we're gonna do is we want to grab all the participants that already exist. Um, you can use lookout for each dot get item. I want to use the participant. All right, so we have participant. It comes in with as an array. So as always, we can perform the check. So if there are no participants, we just return or um, true. I guess we can use that. We return true. Or if there is there are participants, we only want to filter out the participants matching this particular participant ID. So let's go a filtered uh, participant. So you just look. Oh no, nope, you just use the participants. Um, oops, forgot to await that. This is, should be asynchronous. Uh, filter. Use the filter pass the participant. You have the participant, the participant's ID it is not equal to the participant's ID. So it should not match that. That means anybody else. So once we have that, we simply just um, wait and look out for each dot set item back at the same participant storage key, this time with a filtered participant. And we can return true. Or we can even return a promise at this stage so let's rather do that let's return this and in this case there's nothing here so we can just because we can return true as well so this mutation is complete so what we're going to do let's get rid of this to do so we call in the mutation dot mutate and all we want to do is pass in the participant's id and that is that so this one is going to run so let's save that and let's uh, delete Peter Scrolls. So we call in the delete. So say okay. 
But as you can see, nothing is uh, the Peter hasn't uh, vanished. But when we reload, we can see that uh, Peter is gone. And why is that? The mutation was successful, but we didn't update this query when this mutation was done. So just as what we've done for the edit this query over here. Oh, sorry, this uh, on success and on set. So we are going to uh, perform the exact same operation for this mutation as well. So we can simply just quickly get all this. We can we have to bring in the client. So use uh, query client. So we get that and then return client.invalidate queries and we pass in the participant storage and unsettle. Well, we don't even need to do any unsettle because as you can see, uh, there's nothing else we want to achieve with the unsettle. So just returning the uh, invalidate queries, which returns a promise, is all good. So let's say we want to delete uh, Bali Wiston. Just click on delete, say OK. And you can see that uh, Bali is gone. So this is one of the great things of using React Query. It quickly updates your, uh, you can update your cache queries in order just by invalidating it, which is really nice. OK. Now we are done with the delete for the participants page. We are going to perform the exact same thing for the single participants view page or something like that. So what we uh, would like to do before that is to refactor this code here since it's going to be the exact same thing. So we're going to refactor that and let's say let's call it or uh, let's move that to let's say storage storage or uh, this storage service or something like that so let's call it as a service since it's outside of our application let's call it service um i'm going to export a nope, not default uh, function or delete participant which is going to perform the exact same thing that we have over here so we can just grab all this and place that in there. So this has to be asynchronous function. Let's import this, import this, and import this. We need a participant ID, which is a number. So we have delete participants, which is a service. We can bring that in here, return that. Um, we don't even need to do that. Um, let's return this, pass in the participant ID. We can simply just um, do this, and that's done. So we just pass in the delete function directly, and it should work. If we go to the participants and want to delete, all right, it works. Okay, great. Now we want to do the exact same for the participants page. So let's uh, simply grab this bring that in here with our mutation uh, import that from uh, turn stack and we need a client too as well very important to update our cache let's support that as well so we have the mutation here let's have this function called handle delete so handle deletes is going to call the mutation dot and mute it. We just pass in the participant ID. But before we actually call the mutation to delete the client or the participant, sorry, we want to check to see if the uh, the person actually wants to delete the participant. So we can just do query dot data. It's not necessary. Okay. So if if the client or the manager does not want to delete the participants, you just return it. But if they do want to delete the participants, then we pass on the participant's ID. And when that is successful, in this case on the unsettled, what we want to do is we want to navigate the person back to the participant's page. So we can just bring in the, the use navigate. So use navigate, 
So let's say uh, we have data is not necessary. But, um, let's say data, what does data have for us? Uh, value, okay, it comes in as a Boolean. So if there is no data, that means it returns an invalid value, then we just uh, return. But if data was successful, that means we were, su we, uh, we were successful in deleting the participant. All we need to do is simply just navigate the user to the participant's page. All right. So let's create a button to call the uh, click the handle delete. So if let's say we go to Patrick Star, uh, let's say we want to delete the person, let's say okay, then we go back to the page, the participant page, and we can see that our participant has been deleted successfully from the system. All right. Thanks a lot for watching the video. Do let me know what you think about it in the comments below like dislike share or anything that is to your fancy and i'll see you guys in the next video god bless you